and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, 10 EMS Monitoring Tips in 30 Minutes, Best Practices from TIBCO EMS Professionals. My name is Gia Mangino, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. The presentation will be approximately 30 minutes long, with time left at the end to address questions from the audience. If you'd like to participate in this Q&A session, simply enter your question into the chat panel or the Q&A panel at any time during the event and click Submit. I'll also be asking a few polling questions during the event, so please feel free to participate. With that, I'll pass it over to you, David. Great. Thank you, Gia. And uh, I want to welcome everybody to our webinar today. We really appreciate you making the time to join us and discuss the 10 MS monitoring tips in 30 minutes. So we hope we can get this down to 30 minutes. Now, these tips are gathered from customers just like you, where our direct customers that we work with or our partners' customers, or in fact, several of these tips were actually collected from the TIP community forums. So this is something that we think is going to be very valuable to you in coming from your own peers. Is David Hickman, and I am in product marketing here at SL. Today, I'm going to be joined by my peer and colleague, Glenn Devane, who is a solutions expert with over 15 years' experience in middleware and middleware monitoring. Most of you probably know who we are, but if you don't, we all sell. What we do, we specialize in end to end monitoring for middleware centric applications. Now, you probably also heard of our, our flagship product called RTView. We really got our start in custom monitoring and have been working to monitor custom middleware solutions for over 25 years. And in the recently, we have really expanded the middleware piece to actually monitoring the entire middleware application. We are commonly in use customers within multiple groups within our customers. Now, we're here to TIPCO. We have been a partner of TIPCO's since 2002, so that over 13 years. We are the makers of TIPCO RTView. So if you're familiar with TIPCO RTView EMS monitor or Business Works monitor or most recently Business Events monitor, uh, those are the products that we produce for TIPCO, and we're not simply software providers. We are a strategic sales and solutions provider for TIPCO, and in fact, we have over 120 joint customers today. So we work very closely with TIPCO both on the development side, the sales, pre-sales, the post-sales, even handling a lot of the ourselves. So we're, we're very close with these guys and we have very deep knowledge around the those solutions. Now, we'll start our first poll here uh, while I'm talking. But a number of ways that you can monitor your EMS infrastructure uh, today. It's many of you, probably all of you, are familiar with EMS command line tool. In fact, if that's primarily what you're using, you can go ahead and select that in the poll. You could take this step up. Many of you are probably using Hawk Console to a high-level view of that. Of course, we also have the TVU platform, and that's in a couple of flavors. It's TIPCO's version is specifically on the EMS platform, while L's version is an enterprise monitor, so it, it allows you to plug in of other different monitoring uh, sources. So it's a little bit bigger than, than just EMS. But either way, what we're going to use some great examples here today and what you should be monitoring, why you should be monitoring it, and, and show you um, visual examples of, of how it can be done in some of our monitoring consoles. But uh, yeah, if are you guys completing the, the poll, just to give an idea of everybody's using, I see the poll has ended. I don't know if you can share some of the results with us. 
We have four um, EMS command line. Um, our highest percent was the Hawk console, so that's interesting. Thirty percent answered Great. B. Cool. And, um, I don't. Thirty percent answered A. Excellent. And can you show us the results? There we go. Fantastic. So good. So we see we do have a lot of people who are, are working with the basic uh, TIPCO products, and, and I think we're going to show you some pretty interesting stuff today, I hope. So I'm going to continue on. Now, what we hope is that these 10 tips will be to help you in a number of different ways. In your daily monitoring routines, the things that you do every morning when you come into the office, the ability to proactively identify growing problems before they actually start impacting uh, your business applications, as well as ways that you can increase visibility of the instability of your EMS platform to management, be it uh, your IT management or even some of the uh, business guys who have a vested interest in making sure that these mission applications are running properly all the time. That, I'm going to over to my colleague, Glenn, who's going to walk us through the 10 tips. Great. Thanks, David. I'd like to start off by um, talking about one of the, the uh, tips that was uh, brought in to us by Alexandra. She mentions that we we need to be monitoring the producers and the consumers of the uh, MS environment so that we have early warnings of any application-related issues. The from, from practical experience, it's one of, of uh, many of the sources that we've gotten these tips uh, for you today. One of the things we've been advised is that if you're monitoring the number of connections and unexpectedly changes, Indicate that there's a, a, an application level problem. Maybe the application has dropped off, or maybe maybe otherware source, middleware resources have lost connection. The important thing is that you now have information that can enable you to correct the problem before it impacts the business community. And having an early warning, of course, is that it gives you a handle on what's going on before the threat. If there's a problem with your EMS environment, uh, you want to be the first to know so that when, when you are contacted by other support groups, you've got answers at your fingertips. So now through these tips, we continually emphasize the importance of looking beyond EMS to understand the cause and also the impact of an event within EMS on other parts of the infrastructure. Okay. Really important to understand the relationship the twin SQs and topics that you're responsible for, and this is provided to the online customer. This is the thing that affects your business. A good system, regardless of which ones you, you clicked in the survey, a good monitoring system will reveal the health state of resources upstream and downstream from you. And you the impact of an issue Perhaps relating, you know, relating to a topic, uh, you can associate that topic with the application, and then there you can associate that to the business service, and you have a good understanding then of whether the failure you're looking at is a critical service, needs immediate attention, maybe it's some internal application, and you can uh, put your efforts elsewhere first. So here's an example screen. This, uh, of course, is, is produced by RTG. That you'll see here that we're able to look at the connections and the destinations. We're able to, to monitor the number of consumers, the number of connections, and of course the topics and the queues. And up an alert to uh, to monitor the the number of subscribers and the number of consumers that are connected to this particular server. 
of set thresholds. The normal expected behavior is 80, but in this case, it's, it's shot up to 239. So please, something has happened. It could well be that a change was made at the application that affected uh, the consumers, but it's something that needs to be looked into. This is an early warning of a problem. Will it ultimately affect your, your business community? And you drill down into this using using the monitor, you see that we've got peaks in the number of bytes. This line here, the message line, there's no corresponding increase. So clearly there's an application uh, problem at this point. Okay, the tip that we're going to be talking about is the need to monitor overall Q health to determine if consumers, publishers, Users of EMS have exceeded their normal behavior. Know that EMS can act as the canary in your IT coal mine and indicate there's a problem elsewhere in the application or the middleware stack. Instead of being the recipient of support calls and there's something going wrong within EMS, you can actually be the originator of some calls where you can call the application team and say that you're seeing some abnormal behavior from some of their producers. Exactly. Batch processes. You know, are batch processes being consumed before the next batch arrives? Has there been a change there? Is there a change in the demand of EMS? Consumer is running slow, so maybe that's the application group you need to contact. With processes. You should have messages sitting on a queue for more than 30 seconds can indicate a problem. The list is not up to speed. Maybe it's failed. Maybe the connection is broken. These are things that you can proactively address before users are aware of a problem. And then finally, don't forget that uh, traffic bill dropping bus threshold can indicate a problem. The application is not producing enough messages. It can indicate a backlog is building up elsewhere, or maybe the application has again failed. This is a view of an EMS single server. Here, we're not just looking at the connections. We're not just looking at the messages. We're not just looking at pending messages. We're looking at all of these indicators on the line on the same screen. So here, we're able to get a really good idea of the health state of the single server. These indicators, like pending messages, is it like your pulse rate? Elevated count is okay as long as you expect it and as long as it's short lived. It's not the R, which is the equivalent of escalating. But with there, the escalation, we're going to want to know more about the health state of this EMS server. What you do is instead of simply notifying the next level up or the other people that you're having a problem with this and a certain threshold's been exceeded. You're able to provide snapshots of this. You're able to provide them with this URL so that they can see exactly the same information that you're seeing. So we've taken the same view, but this time we've extended the time range up for eight hours. Formerly looking at five minutes, which is showing us what has happened in the near time. But eight hours is going to be enough for us to be able to go back over time and see what perhaps triggered this event. We can see, in fact, that a gradual increase in, these, in the message counts. And so it needs to go back so we can extend that time range even further. Very useful view. This is the key metrics view. Remember that I said it's very important to understand that um, ES is part of a flow. And so be able to understand is the dependence tendencies for EMS. And here we've got a simple view that shows us the EMS queues and the servers that, that support those queues, along with the engines and hosts that interact. So we've got physical host or the, the virtual host, we've got the JVM, we've got EMS itself plus the BW. And we're able to look at the demand being placed on these systems again over time. This happens to be a 24-hour view. Build pick list to say take a look 
kind of over maybe a month period. But we can see here that we've got some problems with JVM. It's gone red here. We've got a, another problem with CPU utilization. Also, within the same time band as these problems with EMS and BW, a clear indicator that there's an issue. Another factor in is the async DB size. This overlooked uh, metric, mostly because it's hard to, uh, hard to reach. The monitoring system should be able to do some of these less accessible metrics easier into your overall monitoring system and also easier to understand. So another indicator that um, all is not well with the system. An increase in DB size uh, could indicate that messages are stacking up somewhere on the server. Other, being redirected to the wrong queue and not getting consumed, or that the consumption rate has decreased. So we've got performance levels uh, somewhere perhaps on this EMS server. We've got to understand performance problems at a level that become apparent at the server level, and this is one of the indicators that can do that. One of the views that shows us a group of support servers that are supporting uh, a business service. And over here, what we're able to do is look at the async DB size. Now, DB size can issue these alerts, and you can easily adjust the alert threshold based on the business cycle, based on your experience. Jed has very kind and provided us with this tip advising us that we should monitor the size of the message so that you don't run out of disk space. So you need to create an alert that's based on the size of the message and not the message count, which is, of course, the normal way that we handle things. If we were to look at the pending messages, we're able to look at the total number of messages pending and the number of bytes pending. We could, all, of course, use this and then take a look at the compute layer to look at how much storage we're consuming. Tip number five is, is talking about message latency. We, everybody knows that this is indeed a very difficult um, to achieve, especially through some of the, the more um, console-driven solutions. But now it's getting more and more important, especially as applications become more and more of the low latency type. Latency string overall business performance of the application. And so we understood. By understanding message latency, tune the EMS environment so that it's running optimally. Include and look calculated basically on something like per message count divide outbound message rate per second. And that will be an indicator of the changing latency within the EMS environment. Well, if you monitor the EMS latency, you can ensure your SLAs are being met. This is the indicator that performance within the overall EMS environment is uh, degrading. Uh, you should start paying attention. So here's an alert. This is where what we've been able to do is to uh, understand that the particular application is sensitive to latency. So it's normal global setting. So we've done is we've gone in and we have actually tuned the alert so that it's much more sensitive than is normal. Uh, and we thank Jed again for this. Jed, Jed very guy. Right. So um, look at the pending match count. It is it is probably the most um, commonly used indicator of, of issues. So it tells us that's whether there's too many messages. There are some bad messages causing um, a consumption issue. Putting pending messages and you don't get them makes that uh, abuser is having an issue. So that's 
So here's a screen that gives us a summary view of this ENS server. We've already that we can see how well connected this server is to the rest of the EMS and to the other uh, IT functions. We get the number of consumers and the number of queues and topics. Down here, we've got the trend charts that shows us the pen message plus the in and out message rate. It's important. Uh, we will be able to understand the beauty of this. Now, we're looking here at the seven day period. That's a very common period to want to look at so that we can understand at a weekly level what the demands are on the EMS system. So what we've wanted to do is to understand the behavior of the consumers on the server. So we've been able to drill in and we've been able to get the destination name and the ID of all of the, cons uh, of all of the uh, consumers on our EMS server. Now, one of the things that we need to constantly be aware of is that the physical infrastructure is what supports our EMS environment. Many years ago, of course, we had dedicated servers for dedicated functions. But now, as we are uh, getting into using commonly, uh, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of these systems are being virtualized, which means now that it's much more dynamic. And so that we're not part of allocate resources. And some of those resources they're reallocating are our resources. It's ourselves with, uh, you know, where we don't have total control of the environment that we live in. Views of a single host. Um, happens to be SL host one. It's a virtual machine. I look at the operating system. I can look at the amount of memory being used. I can number of processes. I can look at the network. In fact, I've got all of the additional compute information here. I have our favorite uh, trend charts. Right? So we have the CPU and memory, but we work track. Some problems at an EMS level, and that's for us to understand, you know, why is this intermittent problems happening? It's very to take a look at the host information and see that perhaps part of that intermittent problem is because we've, we're being starved of CPU, or we're starved of network, or maybe the network, sorry, starved of memory, or maybe the network is not functioning properly. This can to solve a messaging relating problem. When really it's, it's an infrastructure problem. Look at are the, the dashboards. How is this information presented? It's just dashboards for aggregated at a glance monitoring. The performability metrics are easier to scan if functionally grouped. In other words, if you've got like a 120 uh, EMS servers, and you're moving applications around, it's really hard to understand uh, as a group together. A dashboard should be able to handle that for you. It should be able to group those, um, those by function or maybe by re region. Make it a lot easier to understand. We all uh, topology diagrams. Uh, very well, not just you understanding the environment and the dependencies between these servers, but it's so very easy for you to pass this information to external support groups, so they in turn can understand what's going on. Okay. Sort of a traditional uh, map. What we're doing here is we're grouping these servers together. It's a functional grouping, and if a color Tell the health state of service. Now, in a particular case, the metric we're using is alert severity. So we're not necessarily looking at how many alerts have, have come out from this particular server. What we've applied some intelligent logic. And which of the uh, the alerts are the critical ones and which ones aren't. And this, this um, these panels are affected by that. Map, but this time, what we're looking at is uh, uh, an indication of some 
information. So we have ping messages in and out, information about the state of this particular EMS server. What we want to discuss is the ability to prioritize your alerts by business impact. So alerts priorities is essential. Now, how can you do this when you, you, you don't really understand how to prioritize your own support efforts? IT should align with the business priorities automatically. This isn't something that, that you should need to study up on every week. Applications are added. Your monitoring system should factor that in. Your system should be intelligent enough to the systems, which in this case would probably be um, order processing and inventory manager, as opposed to the accounting systems. This gives you a chance so that when, when you have two applications giving it a warning at the same time, you know this is the one you need to take care of first and not the EMS demo system. Service. To use heat maps, what this has done is to filter out all of the non-essential flows, so you understand exactly what it is that impacts the business. So this is the flow that the business themselves would understand. This example of how you can use the same by many different groups within the infrastructure. So when you're having support discussions, everybody can be looking at the same screen and everybody can understand that screen. Also, your operational people who have a huge range of things to support would not understand the flow or the dependencies within the application. But when looking at this screen, I think it's pretty intuitive. I'll ask about the ability to leverage EMS historical data. Up to date, we've really been talking more about how to solve problems as they arise and, and how to, how to kind of pre prevent individual types of problems. But what we're saying here is that if we start looking at the uh, EMS historical data, we move to improve. What we can do, we look at the demand trends, we can look at the response throughout the entire business cycle or multiple business cycles. And if they're able to align resources to demand. Here are uh, uh, trend charts, this time looking at seven days. What we're able to do when we look at this thing over seven days, of course, is to look at a week's worth of information. So now what we can do is we can plan a little bit going forward and we can adjust the resources that we need accordingly. metric screen that, that uh, I brought up before. Here we're looking at, again, the EMS and the, the JM and the VM, and now we've introduced the web log application service. And what I want to show you is that this is showing the demand. This is not threshold driven. This is showing you in a, the, the demand placed on each of these resources. So we're you know, moving to improve. What we can do is take a look through here, and we can see that most of these are consistently green or maybe pale yellow. There are a few, definitely yellow or red. So when we start increasing the resources available to these different ones, what we can do is work towards getting all of these in a predominantly green state. It's hard to do. If you're able to start looking at history, and if not able, and the relationship of these different components. Now, our continually striving to improve is continually uh, expanding itself so that the um, the tools that we offer can be of more and more value to the support groups. So we've recently uh, introduced the uh, integration of TikTok virus. So this is a report that you have historical information that we've been storing. The outbound message rate counts week and a week number. And these reports are the kind of reports that your management are going to be interested in. Your management are going to want to be thinking strategically. What they want to know is 
<clears throat> different applications are playing what place and what kind of demand on the EMS system. The eighty percent of the EMS environment is being used by the by the uh, mission critical applications and not perhaps being used by um, non essential systems. In addition to the RT view uh, if you like. So I um, to everybody for the, the tips and tricks that they sent in to us. Now, I'm betting that, that, that the members of the audience there have said, well, I didn't mention the one I always like. So what I'd ask you to do and urge you to do is to send them in to us. Uh, next webinar we do, we'll, we'll, we'll use those, we'll integrate those, we'll share those with the, the, the team, and we'll also put it up um, in our, uh, some of our web websites. So once again, thank you for those that you that contribute. And if you have something to contribute, we'd very much uh, like it if you could send them on to us. Uh, David uh, will give you all of the contact information. And hope that you found this useful. Uh, thanks very much. So David. Let me share my desktop here. Okay, so I appreciate it, Glenn. Um, one of the things that really stands out when you a lot of the examples that Glenn was showing you today is the ability to monitor your EMS servers and your other middleware applications in context. Providing additional context is to help you great, gain greater understanding and comprehension and help you solve problems faster. So, for instance, if you see that EMS is slowing down, Maybe the problem is actually in a loaded database or in a host that's running low on memory. Having that additional context to the host information is going to help you troubleshoot that faster. You'll be able to proactively monitor your systems using things like the key metrics. For instance, you want to see how the queue depth is growing over time as it's approaching its threshold. So as you see it nearing its alert threshold, you can actually act on it and do something about it before it uh, starts sending off alarms. And of course, the additional context in the form of historical information gives you very powerful root cause analysis tools so you can kind of go back and see what happened last night when that alarm went off, you know, uh, everything seems fine in the morning. Or as Glenn pointed out, if you're doing capacity planning, having that historical traffic uh, analysis is going to give you the context needed to do more with the information that you already have today. So we've shown uh, a lot of different screenshots, and I think it can be confusing. A lot you saw today, particularly the EMS metrics, can be exposed and correlated and visualized with the TIPCO EMS monitor that you know, this is primarily on the EMS platform itself. But if you want to see some of the context that we showed you today uh, in terms of how EMS is performing in relation to some of the peripheral components like your DACE, your CEP engines, your DIG grids, your app servers, your, your business process engines like BusinessWorks, SA, adapters, uh, all down to the physical host level, the virtual host level, the network level, and even to your cloud service providers. If you want to be able to see this additional information, with the context of, of a single monitoring application, then you're going to want to look at our RTView Enterprise Monitor product that's available exclusively through SL. Now we're going to kind of close with one more poll. We want to uh, ask you guys a little bit about you know your monitoring priorities. So there's a lot of different technologies that we can monitor here with RTView Enterprise Monitor. And I'd like to know, for you guys in particular, are you responsible just for EMS or, let's say, just for messaging within your organization? Or do you also uh, are responsible for monitoring in, in the performance of TIPCO components, like business works or business events or active matrix, or even other non-TIPCO middleware components? We'd love to hear from you. Uh, to see, you know, how broad a scope 
your requirements are. So that, of course, we can continue to build products that better serve our our user community. So just give it uh, another second here, and and then she can show us uh, the results. I think. Let's see, the poll has ended, and most of you. Let's yeah. I'm just waiting for um, it's just calculating the results. Got it. And I expect that you guys monitor more than just EMS. Okay. Results were B. I see. So you guys do monitor both at least EMS as well as business works. And a pretty good distribution. So I think that validates some of the value that our view enterprise monitor could provide you in your day to day uh, jobs. So with that, uh, if you have any questions in terms of, you know, how we can help you, what maps can be monitored, you know, how this uh, essentially, you know, extend some of your existing investments. In fact, because the Tito RTV monitor and the Enterprise monitor are built on the same platform, uh, if you need to take what you have and extend that out with additional capabilities, we can do that uh, without having to start from scratch. So if you have questions, if you'd like to have a, a personal demo, let us know. If you'd like to do a free trial, we're happy to do that with you. All you have to do is visit us at sl.com. You can email us at info at sl.com. You can call the number below. Or as, as Glenn mentioned throughout the, the presentation, we also interact with a lot of TIPCO customers on TIP community. There's a, uh, a, a, a forum called TIPCO RTView. As well, monitoring and middleware. So, questions. If you have other tips, as Glenn said, that you want to share, we link them. Go ahead and post it up there. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Gia, and we can answer a few questions. Thank you very much, David and Glenn. Um, I would just like to add that we did record the webinar, and I will be emailing a link to all of you within the next few days. So please feel free to pass along to your colleagues. So we do have one question um, this morning so far, and our first question is, if I have TIBCO's EMS monitor, can I see your solution packages to monitor the host that EMS runs on? Right. Um, no, I think that's one of the examples where you would need to uh, use RTV EM. So what we would do is we would come along with install EM, and we would then simply connect uh, your EM, current existing EMS monitor into EM and extend that by then monitoring the, the host of VM information and, and integrating that data together. If you're one of those that clicked used to BW, uh, thus we can also add BW and active spaces, et cetera, into the, the mix. And when you see EM, we mean the enterprise monitor, correct? Uh huh. RTV right. enterprise. Right. Yeah. Thank you. One other question. I am concerned about overhead. What is the impact? That's a great question. So RTView has been designed from the outset to not introduce uh, overhead to the monitor, to the system that is monitoring. Okay. Uh, like everybody at some point or another has experienced that uh, some of the performance issues they, they have uh, are actually introduced by monitoring agents. RTView does not use agents. Uh, the information is collected uh, through various different systems. Uh, we bring those metrics into RTView. All of the analysis, all of the processing is the RTView server. It's not actually done on the host. Oh, great. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you, David. Um, I do not see any other questions at this time. Appreciate everybody joining us today. Again, I'll be sending a link to the recording and have a great day, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Jim.